Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm going to be talking about Qi energy. Yes, Qi Gong. Um, I think it's actually spelled Q-I, if you're wondering. But yeah, other people put C-H-I. Anyways, let's uh, hit on up this video I've got here, just as a sneak preview of what I mean by Qi energy. Then he asked for our newspaper. Whatever he'd done to our newspaper, it's how he'd healed my eyes that made me wonder. What do these people living in the shadows of the volcanoes still know that we of the West have forgotten? Okay, so people, I think you get the point there. When it comes up with fire from his hands. Now, it's supposed to be some sort of electrical charge that he's actually dispersing using his hands. Now, I have got a longer video. Hopefully it's not going to get flagged or anything like that. <clears throat> but it goes into, he mentioned there inside the video, that he had his eyes healed by this chap. So let's hit on up the video, because this is when he first met Dynamo Jack. That's, that's sort of the nickname he goes by, Dynamo Jack. Let's hit play on this one. Let's just make sure the volume's up and hit play. I first met him in the early 80s in a Chinatown of urban Java. He didn't want his real name or address revealed, so we called him DJ for Dynamo Jack. He was only a healer, he said, but he did direct a powerful energy generated from his own body into his patients. Sometimes he used the needles, sometimes just his hands. He called the energy Qi, and it was so strong that he usually needed a grounder to hold his patient's feet. For years we followed him around Java on his healing rounds, pleading to be allowed to film him, but he always refused, saying his powers resulted from a type of meditation with an ancient tradition of secrecy. It was only when my brother Lorne was suffering from a serious eye infection that he finally allowed us to film him in 1987. It was nothing like any acupuncture I'd ever had. I was getting really powerful electric shocks and couldn't control my movements at all. Im yang, positive and negative. You know? And my positive from here and my negative from here. Mm. And we meet together, this can get uh, like electricity. And is this because you're special? You have a special sort of uh, no, it's body? It's meditation every day. It's meditation that does it? Meditation every day. Like you can touch me, like this. It's nothing, okay? It's my burn. No, it's like this. <laughs> For our sound recorders, it was also a shocker. <laughs> He then took our newspaper outside and showed us how Qi can also be used to set things on fire. We just saw this clip earlier. You know, he's a medical practitioner, you know, first and foremost. He's not a street performer. When we heard performer. we'd shown this footage in public, he was very upset and refused all our future efforts to contact him again. As the years passed, we sadly resigned ourselves to never seeing him again. My brother Lorne never did, for by 1997 he was already dead, when I again found myself with DJ, now treating me for an eye problem. But it wasn't this that brought me back. He had tracked me down, out of the blue, and invited me to tell me a story. He had just returned from two years on a deep meditational journey, alone, 
in the heart of Borneo. Okay, people, so at this point in time, for those that are in the premiere, do you think this is real or do you think it's fake? I'm going to put a little poll in there so you can start hitting it up on whether you think this is real or fake. And then I'll put the, as a pinned comment for those afterwards, you can see the results of that poll on what the audience thinks. Amongst his revelations, he had seen, he said, how history was moving on into great change and the old wisdom was vanishing. So he called me back to film just enough of him to remind us that we all have undreamed of powers sleeping within us and that there's nothing special about him except for his training in waking. Grounding this patient, my cameraman Joe is having to use all his weight to keep contact. But she is pushing him away. <laughs> He seems able to control the amplitude of this chi, like a dimmer switch, and it causes uncontrollable responses in the patients and their grounders. I can barely keep my hand on you. Why are the electricity so strong? This mother unwittingly grounds her child. He won't sit still, so she's asked to hold him and grin and bear it. Sometimes, signs of this passing energy can be seen in the transmitter, too. This chi stuff is only the surface, he says, of the real adventure beneath, in the meditational technique. Projecting chi from the palm of the hand can also be used to resist rifle pellets, he says. Not seen this before. Don't try this at home, people. First, you learn to distinguish between yin and yang chi in your body. Then, how to pull it in your navel chakra. Then, how to project it, he says. And it's the proportionate mixture between yin and yang which accounts for different effects, like pulling or pushing objects or igniting them. Then he gets really strange. He says that mastering yin chi is the key to the spirit world. There's a long tradition of Indonesian krisis being possessed by spirits. So people bring him their krisis to see if they're duds. Okay, this is Here, all new to says, me. He doesn't manipulate matter by projecting mixtures of yin and yang chi. He merely creates a field of yin energy in which, he says, if there's a spirit, it can manifest itself. What? So I invited a small group of scientists back from the United States with measuring equipment to test if DJ was for real. As you would. And if so, where might this energy belong on the electromagnetic spectrum? Catherine Cook, CEO of the Mind Science Foundation in Texas. Dr. Roger Nilsson, a Swedish medic and international racing sailor. Dr. Greg Simpson, a physicist from New York's Albert Einstein University, and Andreas Polak, one of DJ's Australian students. The visitors are confident they'll uncover him as a fraud in no time. Greg is the first guinea pig, and he's uncomfortable about showing that he can feel anything at all. Dr. Roger doesn't know what to expect. <laughs> Out comes the metal detector, like the things they use in airports to see if he has any concealed metal in his body. What the fudge? Then the voltmeter to try and measure the chi. But how to get it to work? Where's the ground? What settings? <laughs> DJ suggests that as his negative is his perineum, and his positive is his navel chakra, perhaps anus. that's where the electrode should be attached. No! He doesn't stand on his dignity. Holy fudge! He's eager to help, <laughs> but still no readings. Oh, They're dear. getting shocks off his arm, 
and now they're on the right settings, but the needle still isn't moving. So it's DJ not electromagnetic. says it isn't electricity, it's chi. One, two, up, I feel it in my whole body. I feel it in three, oh, point three, I feel it in my legs. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> But suspecting there's some tricky setup on his premises they can't find, they insist we all go to a randomly chosen hotel room several miles away to see if he can light a light bulb with his fingers. It doesn't ground on the wall. So Greg holds and grounds one wire. Just an LED. While DJ pumps Chi through the other. The bulbs are LEDs, light-emitting diodes, which ignite in different hmm. colors according to the intensity of current. Yes. On, off, on. Brilliant. Are you blinking? Things were going well. DJ was enjoying <laughs> it too, until... <laughs> he invited us all out to lunch at his local, where he tried to push a chopstick through the table. Right, yeah, like you do. That's a party trick, He couldn't trick, get it? it through the formica surface. So he came up through an inch of wood from underneath. No way! Not only did he draw his own blood, but a chopstick splinter had caught Alison here between the eyes, drawing Ooh. more. That could have been worse. The incident was laughed off apologetically, but next morning he was a different man, drawn and upset. He said he'd been visited all night by his long-dead master, raging that he'd broken the strict taboos of his sect, never to show off in public and never to cause harm or draw blood. He felt deeply chastised. All further testing and filming must end. Never again would he submit to public scrutiny, nor accept any new students. He would sink from sight and continue his healing in obscurity, as he had done since before we met him in the early 80s and had always told us was right. OK, people. Well, I'm just going to make myself a little larger on the old screen, I think, people. There we go. Boom. I think because he's a medical practitioner, not a street performer, and he was actually shy about coming on camera. He wasn't in this for fame. They hunted him down. They put him on camera. They did things that he wasn't really overly happy about. He hasn't done this for fame or fortune. He's done this just to share some knowledge to sort of show how he does his healing. I honestly think this might have some sort of real factor to it, people. I'm going to put real out there. I'm putting real on it. Um, yeah, the only thing I would say is in that sort of video segment, he mentioned having a student, a Mr. Polak or something like that. It makes you wonder whether there's still people practicing this Kui Gong or Qi healing practices out there somewhere. It makes you wonder if we can get ourselves on some more modernized footage. I'll be doing the trawling of the tinterwebs. If I come across something, I might do a follow up episode of this. But yes, I think this is real people inside the view, view of us. Um, yeah. And those that have taken part in the poll, be awesome to see your results. I don't know them yet because we're going to see them in the premiere and I'll be pinning them as a pinned comment, peeps. Anyway, until next time, people, hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'm giving it the seal of approval and saying it's real. I could regret that, couldn't I? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.